There's some government legislation coming in force that means that your car will not automatically start during peak times. It could also mean that if you set your car to charge at 9 p.m., it might not start directly at 9 p.m. And more importantly, it could mean the end of cheap foreign import chargers and the granny cable, which I'm pretty excited about. Now the document is very large and contains very many parts. So in this video, we're gonna be looking at some main points. The main points we're gonna look at is how it will stop you from charging at peak times, how it will not allow you to charge at the time you've set, how the government may use it to tax, and how it may mean the end of granny cables. Now I've put a link down below in the description if you're wanting to learn more about this legislation. It's very complex, I've consulted for quite a lot of the EV charge companies that are looking at entering the UK market or already make charges in the EV market uh, to deem what these rules mean. And it's going to be governed in law under the Road Traffic Act and that means that any charger that doesn't comply will be breaking the law. Now, more importantly, some of the legislation, the way I've deemed it and the way I've read it and the way I've sort of spoke to others in the charge industry about it, is there is a small possibility the government could use EV charges in the future to tax buy. So maybe you could be a little bit big brothery about EV charges, but it's very important that we look at this with an open mind. The EV charges now will automatically be set not to charge at peak times. Now this is a software lock and it doesn't mean that you can't charge at peak times if you really want to. What it will mean is if you come home at five o'clock and you've not got any charge scheduling set on your car or your charger and plug in, the charger will not start. It will avoid the peak times automatically. So it just, the idea of this is as we hit more mainstream people buying electric cars, more mainstream people care very much less about EV charging rates or special rates, and the general public will not look at what prices they can charge at. They will just basically stick on the energy tariff they're on and plug the car in. And this is a real worry for the national grid and the government, because it, if more people come in and all plug in at six o'clock and all these EVs start charging at that time, during peak times, when the peak is already high, it does mean that the government and the national grid and power companies will have to invest in building more peaker plants. Now, peaker plants basically mean power plants that are built solely for the purpose of meeting the peak electricity usage at, say, 6 and 7 p.m. This means that during non-peak hours, these power stations have been built for redundancy. They are just there just for those times, which means that everyone's power and electricity costs will go up. And at the moment, we're already facing record high prices. So the last thing we want is more peaker plants being built, raising that cost even more, meaning maybe more nuclear power stations need to be built for this. So by just setting the charger to not charge during these peak hours automatically overrides that. And if you really do need to charge up, there'll be a mode in the charger where you can say, for that particular time that you've plugged in, I need to charge immediately. But then the next day, from what I believe in the legislation, the charger will then have to default back to not charging at those peak times again. And it will carry on doing that. Now we need to understand that this is not the government or charge companies trying to limit what you can charge and when you can charge it. It's purely because majority of people when they come home during peak rates and cook on an oven it only happens over a short period of time ovens hit a max temperature and then turn off and on and rotate in temperature so they're not consuming lots of electricity ev charges however if you came home at five it could be on for three four five six hours and imagine scaling that up to you know several people across the nation this is enough to overwhelm a grip. Now, if you are not on a special EV tariff as an EV driver, first of all, you are absolutely insane. Uh, go to evnick.com forward slash energy and there's a whole host of energy deals and energy uh, things that I've listed there for EV drivers for special prices. Uh, electricity at the time of this video being published can be available for off-peak at 7.5 pence per kilowatt hour. The peak hour is a lot more, but it offsets with that off-peak and means that your average rate is really low. Consider this, that your electric car probably uses more power in a single charge than you use in an entire week. Now, another thing I mentioned is delay charge, which means if you set your charger to charge at 9 p.m., it might not charge directly at 9 p.m. There's going to be built-in randomization at the start time and again this is to deal with the national grid being able to cope with sudden rises of heat peak demand and this is because as these off-peak tariffs become more popular 
it also means that a lot of people will be charging on these off-peak tariffs. So let's just say uh, for an on Octopus Go, for example, the off-peak tariff is half 12. And at half 12, it's five pence per kilowatt hour. If everyone in an entire street is on that deal, or everyone in you know entire DNO network is on that deal, and they've all set to come at half 12, that's a sudden kick up the grid, uh, all of a sudden, all coming online. And the national grid may struggle to cope with such quick demand and such quick succession. Now, if we can add randomised delays, one, two, three, four, I, I don't know how many minutes we go up to, maybe five, ten minute delays on that charge, it wouldn't make a massive difference to what you receive at the end of the night in total charge, but to the national grid, it means that they can see that those cars are ticking on, they can start putting power plants online or maybe uh, you know increasing the, the power or wind turbines are generating at that time by turning them on if they were turned off. And it means that people can re demand response better to this. And this means for you as a consumer, overall long-term consumer prices, again, because they're not having to deal with sudden rises of peak demand that they can't deal with. Now, as you probably know, I'm not a massive fan of granny cables. I've done a video with eFix, you can see top right, who are two electricians, qualified electricians, they do not sell chargers. As everyone says in the video, oh, they're, they're just trying to flog their chargers and flog their services. They do not sell chargers. They are purely a YouTube channel. Uh, Gary used to be in education and Gordon used to be in manufacturing and events. So they are both separate from selling chargers. Now they also agree with me that granny chargers are not the safest or the best way of charging an EV. So the legislation, why do I think it bans granny cables? Well, there's quite a lot of complexity to it. Now, first of all, for a granny charger to be compliant now under the rules, because of the mode charging it charges at and the speed it charges at, it needs to be smart according to the, the grid rules and the legislation that have come in. And that means, smart means money. And it, that means it's gonna cost more to make. And if it's gonna cost more to make and then build on all the safety devices now that are gonna be required, by uh, IET and electrical regulations, it's gonna get more expensive to make. And the more expensive it costs to make, the less likely you are to buy it over buying a dedicated proper wall box, which means that charging companies that make these granny cables are less likely to make them because they have less customers to sell them to. Do I think it could mean the end of granny cables being supplied to manufacturers? Again, manufactured cables would also have to comply to these legislation if being supplied in the UK. So yes, it would also mean likely the end of free supplied free pin granny cables as well. Now there is other reasons why it would be difficult for them to comply apart from it just being smart. And one of them is security. It has to comply with very strict security protocol, which brings us on very neatly to our next point, which is cheap foreign imports. Now, as long as I've been doing YouTube, there has been cheap foreign import charges. And I'm not a big fan of these things because Electric cars are expensive, used or new, all cars are expensive. And if you're buying an expensive vehicle, expensive car, and you then plug your expensive car into a cheap foreign import that's come from a white label factory and on next day delivery, I'd be a bit skeptical about that personally. Um, it's a lot of money and you've got to trust that they meet all the CE markings, the safety devices they say are fitted to that charge are actually working and tested to UK manufacturers specs. and. That might not be the case for some of them. All you know, I'm not saying all of them. Some of them might actually be, you know, decent products. But I'd just be very wary about it. But the reason why the UK legislation is here is to protect some of these charges from being sold that may have security holes and security risks in them. And this is very, very, very important for the national grid and the UK economy. And that's just reason with this by the way there's some charges in the uk at the moment that are currently sold in their current form that do not comply to the legislation and it'd be very interesting to see how they deal with the legislation when it comes out very 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 shortly i've put the exact date down below in the description but we're talking in a matter of weeks of when this video goes live now let's just pretend that one of these cheap foreign charges is you know not under uk legislation and let's just pretend that the UK didn't enforce this law and they were sold in droves, millions and millions of charge points going in as everyone's buying them because they're cheap. We're hitting 2030, everyone's getting electric cars, they're buying these cheap chargers. And there's a foreign superpower um, of, a, of a country level that doesn't like the UK very much. 
there's not many of them I suppose, and they decided to hack this charger that doesn't comply to UK regs. Now it could be a foreign import or it could be a UK charger. This is why they all have to comply. And it was hacked. And what would you do as a hacker, as a foreign superpower, and you wanted to take down UK infrastructure, you turn all these charges to come on at exactly the same time. And that would knock out the national grid. Because at the end of the day, it's not normal typical behavior. The national grid could not predict all these cars all suddenly are demanding a charge exactly the same second. And this would take out the national grid. It would take out the national grid if you had every single house with a smart kettle and they all turned on instantaneously at the same time. It's not just because of an electric car. Any device, all electric devices being turned on simultaneously at the same time in that kind of instance would take down the national grid. On a local and national level, it would damage the grid, physical connections and the UK economy would suffer massively. This would be, you know, one of the largest cyber attacks you could carry out in the UK government, which is why the UK government are insisting on these security logs and the way these devices work. And there's going to be tampering devices in here to stop people going in and messing with them. And that's important because we're going to get to the next point, which is about taxing it. Now, this is just a pure theory of me. It's a guess, the Chancellor's not announced it, the government's not announced it, it's not in the legislation. It's just me summing up what's possible with these new smart meters under this legislation. And that is that they have to comply to the new regs of being smart and secure as the same as a smart meter in your house. They have to have a metering device, they have to have tampering devices, they have to know if they've been tampered, they have to know if they've been opened or altered in any way. And if you can do this, you could have a perfect system for taxing EV drivers in a fair manner. And I actually think that this would be a better method than tax because what you could do is instead of having road tax fund license that you know is basically a, a tax to replace fuel tax, instead of having that tax, which is unfairly biased to drivers but may be doing a little bit less mileage or drivers that are doing a lot more mileage but are getting a better deal, you could base it on a couple of factors you could base it on the actual mileage that those cars do. And you could do that simply by saying, at the moment you get 5% VAT at home. And if you're charging your car, you get 20% VAT on that cost. And that's a simple way of taxing per mile. They could also offer incentives like discounts or special payback schemes for transport companies that are doing food, which means that it wouldn't affect the cost of food. Because as we all know, we're living in an existential cost of living crisis. So this, to me, would be the fairest method of taxing electric vehicles per mile in a way that could be monitored fairly and accurately by everyone. Well, let me know what you think in the comments if you agree. Thank you very, very much for watching this week's video. And I will have some of these charges and some of these, you know, what they look like inside very, very shortly on the channel. So stick around, hit subscribe. Thank you very much. And I'll see you again next week. Goodbye.